Postmortem found he had 392 milligrams of caffeine per liter of blood, the equivalent to 200 cups of coffee. Inquest into his death heard how 78 milligrams per liter of blood or higher can be fatal, meaning the personal trainer had nearly five times the lethal dose. What's up guys, Derek, more plates, more idiots .com. Today we're gonna be talking about this story that just came out personal trainer 29 years old started frothing at the mouth and died after accidentally mixing himself a caffeine powder drink that was equivalent to 200 cups of coffee in quest tears so he made a mixture containing seven times the recommended dose he had 392 milligrams of caffeine per liter of blood equivalent to 200 cups of coffee Inquest heard death can be caused by levels at 78 milligrams per liter of blood or higher cause of death due to caffeine toxicity and his death ruled as misadventure. So how much, how many milligrams of caffeine is in a cup of coffee? It's about 94.2, at least according to Google, um, or 94.8, sorry. So if you plug that in into a calculator, you have 94.8 times 200. So we're looking at 18,960 milligrams of caffeine ingested, apparently. Fucking insane, dude. So, a super fit father died after accidentally making and downing a caffeine powder mixture as strong as 200 cups of coffee, an inquest today heard. Personal trainer Thomas Mansfield ordered a 100 gram packet of caffeine powder to make supplement drinks at his family home. Using the packet, the 29-year-old from Colwyn Bay, North Wales, accidentally made a mixture containing seven times the recommended dose before necking it. I don't see how it's seven times the recommended dose when apparently it's equivalent to 200 cups of coffee, but anyways. His heartbroken widow, Susanna Mansfield said, and even if you factor in a cup of coffee as like, I don't know, let's just say in where he lives, like one, like this amount is equivalent, I don't know, like maybe cup, cup means something different in other places. So maybe it's, I don't know, like half of this or something, but even still, you'd be looking at like, Almost 10,000 milligrams, dude. Fucking absurd still. So anyways, there must be some discrepancy in what the recommended dose is here, but um, his heartbroken widow, Susanna Mansfield, said her really healthy husband then began clutching his chest on the sofa. A post-mortem found he had 392 milligrams of caffeine per liter of blood, the equivalent of up to 200 cups of coffee. Now, can you imagine mixing a pre-workout on your own and realizing you miscalculated it after ingestion? Like fucking scary shit dude and like obviously he i'm sure he didn't even realize necessarily what was going on before it was too late but i mean like once your body has that much drug infused into it like i don't know could you vomit it back up or something and that's like your only shot or get your stomach pumped like instantly like i don't i don't really know what you can do after that but this is definitely a warning shot for individuals who mix their own shit at home and it's like I can understand why some people buy ingredients in bulk and make their own pre-workouts because at the end of the day, it can be more cost effective for sure. If you buy raw materials wholesale and then you put them together, you know, obviously it's time inefficient. You have to flavor it yourself and you have to actually be cognizant of what you're measuring out and very fucking careful when you're using stimulants because you can end up in a situation like this. And this is not the first time we've heard of individuals accidentally ODing on caffeine from using raw caffeine powder and i believe there is a restriction on caffeine powders now on amazon where you can't even buy them because of situations like this where you have individuals miscalculating now when you're in the milligram amounts like if you accidentally fuck up just a bit dude like how many people have we heard of that have accidentally used like 100 units of insulin instead of 10 units and ended up in like a hypoglycemic fucking panic episode like that kind of thing is not totally uncommon. And for somebody just like pouring out raw powders and shit, if you do this all the time, like the likelihood of you screwing it up is low. But on that one occasion where you accidentally like think you took your pre or you you forget or you think you didn't take it and then you take it twice or you accidentally, you're using fucking ounces instead of grams or this or what, I don't know, like whatever circumstance you measure it fucked up you're like on low sleep and you're trying to mix your high caffeine pre-workout and you accidentally mismeasure it or you dump it in you think you know you mix your fucking 17 other ingredients and then you realize you think you didn't mix your caffeine and you mix it in again or you do this you do that like there's so many ways that you could screw it up because you are ultimately putting it on yourself to ensure that you were not overdoing it with this hyper concentrated powder like at least with pre-workout like you're given a scooper and a predetermined breakdown of what the ingredients panel is 
And like worst case scenario, you might accidentally take like, you know, double the recommended serving or something because you, you know, I don't know, like you mismeasure or you fucking forget you had it or whatever. But with this, like it's quite easy to accidentally fuck up a caffeine ingestion um, or at least much more so I would say. So like in general, I would advise against mixing together stimulant blends at home and I would advise just sticking to like the pump ingredients because you don't even know, dude, like this could be, um, if you get like a hyper concentrated version of like pure DMAA powder or something, you overdo it just a little bit. Like who knows, man, this is not a totally uncommon scenario. I'm sure this guy is not an idiot. I'm sure he is a relatively educated guy and ended up in a situation where he is overdoing the shit out of the caffeine from a you know mismeasurement. So anyways, postmortem found he had 392 milligrams of caffeine per liter of blood, the equivalent to 200 cups of coffee. Inquest into his death heard how 78 milligrams per liter of blood or higher can be fatal meeting the personal trainer at nearly five times the lethal dose. Today at the inquest, Mr. Mansfield's medical cause of death was given as caffeine toxicity as his death ruled as misadventure by a coroner. Personal trainer Thomas Mansfield ordered a 100 gram packet of caffeine powder to make supplement drinks at his family home. Um, let's see. The inquest heard Mr. Mansfield had ordered the powder from supplement company Blackburn Distributions. Um, shitty for them because I'm sure they did not you know, plan on somebody misusing their product like this and now they get this press even though like who knows what the recommended breakdown is but i mean you're in like high risk territory when you're selling like straight up fucking stim powder that's like just a little bit like it's not like it's diluted with like 30 grams of other actives where you have to fill up a full scoop just to get your 200 milligrams of caffeine like this is like aggressive where you feel you accidentally like put your full scoop your pre-workout scoop into this you're getting like goddamn tens of thousands of milligrams of caffeine the recommended serving of the powder, 60 to 30, 300 milligrams twice a day. But Mr. Mansfield digital scale had a starting weight of two grams. Ah, so his scale was literally f malfunctioning. The inquest heard Mr. Mansfield was likely aiming for a mid-range serving, but instead drank up to five grams of the powder. Fuck, dude. And again, you're using like another example. If you're using a scale that's meant for food measurements to measure out like milligram quantities of powders, like even in the hair loss prevention space, I've seen individuals that mismeasure because we use like microgram quantities of shit for experimental research purposes and you end up overdoing it a fuck ton and causing significant anti-androgenic side effects. Like this is where you should really not be doing this if you're not like on full sleep, have highly sensitive equipment. Like when you're dealing with stimulants, drugs in general, if you're just dealing with like pump ingredients or whatever, like have at it, but still like for me, not even just as somebody who sells pre-workouts, like the inefficiency of buying this shit in bulk relative to just getting a company that has done it all for you and then having to worry about even measuring out stimulants like this. I, I don't know, man. Like I understand people who need to get, want to get like certain exotic stims that are no longer available in the market, but to get like straight caffeine powder, and then put it on yourself to make sure you're measuring it out correctly every single time with a fucking food scale. Like a lot of people are gonna say this guy was not well educated because of that exact reason, but I mean, like you should never be imposing on yourself a position where you have to measure out milligram quantities of something with a fucking food scale. And I'm sure he is not the first one to do this. He's definitely not the first one to do this. We've actually heard of other stories of this too. The inquest heard Mr. Mansfield was likely aiming for a mid-range serving. Like I said, he had five grams of powder. Wife Susanna said she saw her husband frothing at the mouth just moments after drinking the solution. She ran outside to get help from neighbors and nearby family members before an ambulance was called. Inquest heard paramedics arrive within minutes to use a defibrillator due to his grossly abnormal heart rhythm. Um, let's see. <sighs> Fucking unfortunate, dude. He was rushed to the Yesibidi Glen. This is a hard fucking word, dude. Yesibidi Glen Hospital after going into cardiac arrest, but he was pronounced dead at 4 p.m. on January 5th last year. Father of two. Oh, last year. This is a, why is it coming up now? Is this just like the autopsy report just came out or something? Father of two, Mr. Mansfield, who also worked as a security guard, made the drink shortly after it was delivered to his address. Inquest and Ruthen heard he took a sip of the mixture before he necked the remainder of the drink. Medical cause of death was given caffeine toxicity. Senior coroner John Giddens recorded Mr. Mansfield's death as misadventure due to the unintended result in consuming caffeine powder. He had added he had been reassured that action would be taken by the brand to provide a measuring scoop and an A4 instruction sheet. Mr. Mansfield pictured left and right with Susanna was rushed to, okay, we already read that part. So 
Um, but, but, but inquest heard the instructions and warnings on the packet were not in breach of regulations at the time. Um, Susanna was absolutely heartbroken. Self-employed Mr. Mansfield ran fitness classes with a personal training business and used the motto with you every step of the way. So really fucking unfortunate and something that should have never occurred to begin with. Obviously the situation in which he imposed upon himself was, uh, I don't know, like you, I get like, maybe you don't, you don't think of that necessarily. You just have a scale you assume it's accurate because you bought it for literally measuring out milligram amounts of things potentially, or you see just like, I don't know, I don't know how sensitive a scale was, but I mean, at the end of the day, if it was not like zeroed out ahead of time and it was at two grams and you just like, don't really know how to use a scale to begin with for micro quantities of things, this is an inevitable outcome for people who are not using pre-designed formulas in my opinion. So just be careful with stimulants guys. Like even with your pre-measured shit, like some people are definitely overdoing it and putting themselves in positions where they can get heart arrhythmias, blood pressure, misregulations. We just did that story on a Scott Murray who had uh, um, passed away at a very, presumably a very young age as well from like sleep deprivation, putting yourself in a, as well as, you know, concurrently with essentially working himself into the ground Individuals who are putting their body in a perpetual state of fight or flight through stimulant abuse and sleep deprivation potentially and stimulant abuse to support that sleep deprivation to then have natural, like normal level performance throughout the day while they're sleep deprived. You're putting your heart in a fucked up position even at a young age and you can put yourself at propensity for like literal heart abnormalities and or like actual heart attacks at a very young age that you would have otherwise never had if you weren't putting in your body in a chronically, I don't know, like abnormal state, like having your sympathetic nervous tone, like chronically redlined, never getting the proper rest. Um, like these are things that often go overlooked and just are seen as like regularities nowadays. People addicted to caffeine, people who are, you know, forced to get up super early to go to work and then go to bed late because they otherwise work all day and want to relax at nighttime and watch TV until, until what time? Like you have to take some accountability at the end of the day to make sure your schedule and everything is dialed in and you're not working. What is this? What's the saying? Work hard, work smarter, not harder and you don't have to be reliant upon like heavy duty stimulants in order to support your work. Um, like I think that caffeine is a very, very reliable tool when used appropriately. So maybe I'm getting on a bit of a tangent here, but at the end of the day, if you're going to be measuring out any sort of like drug, use a highly sensitive scale and ideally use a predetermined like GMP manufacturer certified product that has this stuff like 100% measured out for you ahead of time. So you don't even have to worry about relying upon measurements with a potentially inaccurate scale. So really fucking shitty situation that could have been easily avoided. And that is the video for today. More pre-workout mishaps. This one, unfortunately not having a, uh, I don't know, a conclusion that was not dire. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow my Instagram at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, anything I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Talk to you guys soon.